Uh, when I first met him, he was in the gardening business. He went there to own a construction company. And uh, he was a big help to a lot of the fellows in the neighborhood. He gave a lot of guys jobs. And a lot of guys are not surviving now because Ike is gone. Ike was another country boy. Good man. Very good man. I've never heard nothing really bad about Ike. Nothing. Big Ike, he was the man until his untimely death or whatnot, which is unfortunate. But he was very popular. He had the club down in Liberty City called Heart of the City. Originally, it was a big movie theater. Because I remember, I went there to the movies. And then, um, I guess it didn't, it didn't pan out too, too, too well with, with, with the movie. And uh, Ike and they bought it. I forget who else was in it, but I know Ike was probably the principal in it. And they bought it. I know I wasn't old enough to get in, but I snuck in. I walked in with a group of people, and I like I was with them, even though I was, I was perpetrating. I ain't had no mustache, no beard, or nothing. But I walked in, and every time, I think the second lady walked into me and said, "What were you doing in here? I'm gonna tell your mama." I knew right there it was time to exit. I was out of there then. But they had the hottest club at that particular time. It was plush, you know. It was nice. You, you could tell he, uh, you know, he spent money in it. A lot of you guys might remember Heart of the City, but. That was one of our more classic landmarks. Everybody, all the hustlers got dressed up. We going to the opening of the heart of the city. And the hustlers came out doing their thing. When I say it was ballerific and stuntastic, that's when I found out what a baller was. When I seen brothers coming in, the, the Benzes and everything, the Cadillac, that's what Cadillac with shoes and Vols was out. When they had the angel in front like this. I'm talking about back in them days. The heart of the city turned out to be a failure because the people in charge of uh, production tried to bring in the big people before they started making money. So this caused uh, the heart of the city to collapse. I, well, most of the time I wore dickies because he was a builder. So he'll go out in his dickies and, you know, classic Miami. Hustler gear, you know, Dickies. He really couldn't tell he had money, you know, because he, all he wore was khakis and he'd wear a nice piece of jewelry. You know, he'd wear some on his wrist, his finger, and some around his neck. He always dressed like a handyman. He wasn't a fancy dresser. Maybe once in a while, if he went to a club, he may put an outfit on. He dressed up on, on big functions. The opening of the heart of the city, Ike wore a big Rolls Royce grill. <laughs> it was incredible. This sucker was about this big. So, I mean, you know, that's the kind of money that the guys had down here. Ike might have been a little bit more flashy than Rick and louder than Rick. Rick was like quiet. You never really hear Rick talk. But Ike, on the other hand, he let you know, I'm in the house, you know, stuff like that. He wasn't no obnoxiously loud, but I'm in the house. You know, Ike just came in. With, like I said, when you're a nightclub owner, uh, you know, working in a nightclub, that's that's the thing you do. You ever met Big Ike? Oh, yeah. I don't mean it. Yeah. I used to go to his house when he had all them guys working for him. Me and my boyfriend used to go catch fish all the time. We came fish and rabbits and stuff over there. He, he a long time, you know, I go, but I didn't know he know my son, but, and he didn't know I was dear mama. <laughs> I guess he said, what dear mama do right in speaking? <laughs> <laughs> That's when I realized what a big house was. You know, I'm going home and I thought our house was all right. You know, three bedroom house back in them days, I thought it was all right. And then when I seen something like that, two stories, a black man got a two story house. That's what, you know, then right then I said to myself, I, got, I can't be broke all my life. I got to get my stuff together. We had a Thunderbird one time. It may have been a 62 or 63 Thunderbird. He had a the old Cadillac one time, which might have been uh, maybe uh, 81, 82. He, was, he did not have a new car. No, I never saw him in a new car. I represented the old, the old, the old coin in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just been getting money for years. Don't bother nobody. You sleep on this type of nigga here. Yeah, you know, he's overall type wearing nigga Jerry girl. Real country. The nigga got so much money, he can't even count it. I didn't need a lot of muscle. He, he wasn't that kind of dude. 
But he had a son. I had, I, I had a, you know, his sons was all the muscle he needed because his sons was, I guess they had, they had their little mob. Well, the community uh, think that he got a real, a raw deal. I think he accused him of things he really wasn't doing. I think uh, a lot of trouble came because he associated with a lot of people he should not have been associating with. But I think he got a bad charge put against him. The detectives say they've traced the drugs back to you. The last time Isaac Hicks got in trouble with the law, it took a SWAT team to get into his house. Hicks's dogs were also killed during the storming. Hicks had yet to go to trial in that drug conspiracy case when he was arrested last night for an even bigger charge. This time, police found 23 pounds of coke in a house agents say he used for distributing and repackaging cocaine, most of which police say ended up in the black community. As far as DEA is concerned, uh, Isaac Hicks is one of the major distributors of cocaine in uh, one of our communities here in uh, South Florida. But Hicks had friends in high places as well. Former Opelika Mayor John Riley was picked up in a wiretap on Hicks's home. Reference to Hicks were also picked up during a wiretap on Riley's home. But no charges were ever filed against Riley. Hicks's wife Janet was also jailed during the drug raid. She and two Hicks associates, one James Sawyer, a man police call the boss man, are charged with possession with intent to distribute cocaine. Hicks's attorney says the charges that his client is a big drug dealer are ludicrous. Well, I always laugh when I hear statements like that because uh, if they know uh, that, then I'm surprised to find out they haven't arrested whoever this other mythical person is. And uh, of course, it also presumes that uh, police know who uh, drug traffickers are. If they knew that, I hope that they would be getting them off the streets. Hicks will remain in custody without bond. Now, I don't know how true it is. This is what, what was told to me. He had a friend that the Spanish dude that got killed. And uh, he went to the dude's house and they just, just blocks was, you know, the guy, I guess the wife knew about the blocks. And they were just stacked all up in there. And I think she was giving them to him for like five grand a, a key. That's how he done. You know. Basically, he just was a guy, he was a hustler. He was a hustler who knew what he wanted, but you know, this life we live don't often give us what we want. When they confiscated, when they came to get I they confiscated like about 32 hours, I think, right? You know what I'm saying? They took that shit over there called the palace. That's like, I think I want the whole block. I think that just was a nigga that just had money. You don't want this little construction company and shit. Niggas know about I. I, man, I probably had more money than any nigga that ever, that ever graced the, the surface of Dade County streets as a black man. I. And giving back, Ike just probably helped a lot of people. See, a lot of people don't give us credit for the people that we help. And I don't think we do it for credit. It's just sometimes we bless with incredible sums of money, and it seems like it's the right thing to contribute. He probably contributed to all kind of things. I, couldn't, I was not his right hand, so I can't just tell you each and everything that he did. But I know several people, he probably saved a lot of households. He probably helped a lot of people. Most of them did, because when you're blessed to have, you gotta also be a giver, you know? So I'm pretty sure Ike probably helped a lot of churches. This was his neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? You gotta contribute to your neighborhood. That's how you stay eating. Well, if he was still around, a lot of people would still have jobs, and uh, he would be very helpful to the community. A lot of people believed in him, and. Uh, he had a lot of followers. Just an older gentleman who was getting the money. He kind of laid foundation for young guys to look at this is what you could do. You can take your money, you can go invest in land and property. That was his thing. International Builders, I think, was the name of his company. Ike had a lot of kids. Ike and his wife both died in prison, you know, but I think Ike left, he left a legacy out here of kids to follow and just try to live in his dream. When we found out that he had, he died from AIDS, we were very sad, the whole community was very sad because a lot of people did not think that he had AIDS when he went to prison. So once you go to prison, they can give you what they want to give you.